Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Juju Show, episode 11. Uh, we've got a packed show of cool updates and stuff to show off for you guys today. Uh, and it seems like we're a little light today, so we'll do super fast intros. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Hey, I'll go first. <laughs> I'm Kevin Monroe. I'm on the uh, I'm on the big data Juju Big Data squad, if you will. I'm doing all things related to big data charms and bundles. I thought I saw some updates. Did you guys have some fancy new stuff come out recently? Like I did you want me to you want me to yes, talk yeah, about that up front? Go ahead. Ooh, I'm excited. So I don't know if uh, folks are aware, but our our sort of core set of big data charms comes from the Apache Big Top project. This is a project that's sort of an umbrella that kind of wrangles um, big data applications, right? Of which there are hundreds. Um, so they had a major release earlier in the month. Uh, it's Big Top 1.2. With it comes a slew of package upgrades, which are welcomed by the community. Uh, brings things in like Spark 2, uh, new versions of Hadoop and Pig and Hive and all that jazz. Um, and so just earlier this week, in fact, yesterday, we made the push for uh, all charms related to Big Top are now supporting that new release, um, which is fantastic. We went through a round of uh, CI using our cloud weather report um, and identified some issues there and, and got them out the door. So I'm really excited about supporting Big Dot 1.2 in our charms and bundles. That's awesome. So just uh, the, right at the last show, they were just getting the Kubernetes 1.6 support out the door. Now we've got Big Top support out the door. So all of our big solutions are rocking and rolling. And I guess you know our next big set will be the OpenStack one should have their update coming up shortly. Um, well, I forget when the due date for that is going to be. I think they're every three months now, right? So I think they were yeah. March. So I guess it'll be coming up in a little bit. Um, all righty. Well, that's good to hear. And actually, we had a lot of news on the mailing list uh, out in the community this week of new charms and things to play with. Um, a real quick one is there was a, a user posted a charm that they're calling unattended because what it does is it turns on unintended upgrades. Or not unintended, unattended as in when I'm not there, I totally intend to do them. Um, and we'll actually reboot your machines. And it's the, the use case I find really interesting because I know I've done this all the time where I bring up some stuff to play with, to test with, uh, leave it up for a few days. Maybe I bring something up to give someone else to play with. Uh, and you just never know because those things kind of come up, there's, there's, you're not actually maintaining that, right? You're not hooking it up to your Nagios. You're not wiring it all into your normal infrastructure. It's kind of fly by the, fly-by-wire type stuff. And this charm kind of puts a little bit of comfort there because you don't what you don't want to have is software or, or things running that can get uh, out of date, that can have a security hole or whatnot that then no one's looking at. I mean, it's it's all on the same network, right? I mean, I know when I do this, I, I do it on the same as I run at home or on the same you know cloud stuff that I'm using. And so uh, it's got to be treated just as much as anything else. And so this is kind of a, a really quick and easy Small, just subordinate. Stick on everything on you know everything that you've got running there, and you can you know trust it a little bit better uh, without taking it all the way in and making it production uh, grade everything because not everything is production grade, for sure. Um, the review queue had a couple of hits in the two weeks since the last show. Um, the two that I was most excited about, the auto scaler got some updates, so that charm's gotten uh, better, which is. Awesome to see because I know a lot of folks, you know, are really looking for an auto scale solution out there to help watch those units, you know, see what the the triggers need to be, and to help respond by adding units and stuff uh, as that goes. And the other one is really awesome. It's an updated Elasticsearch with support for, I believe, it's Elasticsearch the five across the stack. And so, an updated Elasticsearch charm has been been sorely needed, and so. That's definitely one that is in the review queue. I think it had two small issues, but it's definitely at that test it, play with it, and you know, let's let's put it to some good use uh, pattern. And I expect it to get promulgated and, and, and updated really soon. And so, um, I don't know, you guys use much Elasticsearch? Yeah, uh, we tried to, and I, actually, I did the review on Elasticsearch. Um, so, big shout out to James Beatty for uh, putting that together. It is a very welcome upgrade to get ES5. Uh, in there, I wanted to expand on the issues that you brought up. Um, it's it's mostly mostly uh, concerning where should these charms live, right? So we want to spread the maintenance, the day-to-day um, -day, uh, 
issues that may come up with the charm across his, a team of people that are interested in Elasticsearch, right? I don't want to put it all on James, although um, he, uh, he's an awesome contributor there. Uh, so we created a new team called Elastic Ops. Um, and that team, of which James is a member, um, will be in charge of the maintenance and the the day-to-day -day upgrades and things like that for the Elasticsearch charms. Uh, I feel like this is also a good place to stick things like Kibana and Logstash. So all the Elky stuff, uh, I feel like, should be maintained by this team. Um, so it's been formed right now. We've also got a, a, re a repository out in GitHub uh, to house the charm. And so we'll be sort of migrating things out of namespaces and consolidating them under this Elastic Ops team. No, the, the be, only thing that held, held up the review. Yeah, yeah, that'll be really good to do. I know um, folks on my team, you know, we use Elasticsearch in the uh, Charm Store for when you search for charms and things in there. So there's a lot of folks that use this, and it sounds like a great opportunity to kind of get involved and to help um, build out. You know, you, you don't have to be the sole person responsible, but it's, it's, it's a much better community system getting put together now. So it's exciting to hear and see. Yeah. Um, Let's see, next up, this was a really good question someone had on the mailing list. And it's, it just goes to show sometimes you're, you just know too much that you don't realize what folks sometimes don't know. Um, and I thought it was a very important lesson um, for kind of all of us to think about a little bit and to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, and this was that someone wanted to try to deploy an application twice, but it gave them an error saying the name was already in use, so they couldn't figure out why they couldn't do it. Um, and so, all of us that use Juju go, well, yeah, but you can pass in an optional name. So you can deploy um, MySQL 10 times in the same model. If you want to manage all your MySQL in a single model for some reason, you can deploy it and name it based on what it's for. Maybe you're managing MySQL for a bunch of teams and you want to deploy it 10 times. You can Juju deploy you know, MySQL, put a space, and then give it a meaningful name to you. Uh, this is really common for charms that can act as both leader and follower in scale out solutions where you may deploy the same charm twice, one time as a leader and one time as a follower, then relate the two, and they can do the work they need to do to help set up um, any kind of log replication and all that kind of sync that you may want. Uh, it's not always a case of just adding units. You know, Not everything handles HA in that way, especially because you may do things like say, all right, I want to um, now have my applications read from all the followers and so that may be a different relation that you would set up, where the followers that are deployed are related to the applications, and maybe the master or whatever um, is a different relation for rights or however that might be handled. So, anyways, it's one of those. It was kind of cool. I mean, obviously, it was it was a really you know good question, and it it's fortunately it's one of the, you always gotta love the questions where you're like, hey, we can do that. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, but I think it's a good opportunity for us as a whole to kind of think about kind of assumptions we make on things that are obvious that sometimes uh, sneak past. Yep. Um, next, uh, big email on the uh, list about the matrix, the testing suite tool. Uh, I was kind of shown off at the Charmer Summit in Ghent last time, and someone asked the list about, hey, what's the, what's the latest on that? And uh, fortunately, there's a really good update. There's a lot of work that's gone on to it, including Conjure Out support uh, and some other things. So uh, if you're playing with Charm testing, make sure to check out the latest matrix and to see what it can do for you. Side note there, we use it all the time um, in the big data charms and bundles. It is, I have a love-hate relationship with the matrix, right? Because it finds problems all the time. <laughs> I just hate that. <laughs> Um, but it gets called automatically from Bundle Tester, right? So if you're using mm -hmm. Bundle Tester to test your charms or bundles, um, no extra work is needed. Uh, it'll it'll run through a simple deployment scenario, and then start poking at things like killing the Juju D <laughs> process or removing a unit or whatever. So it's really interesting to to think of those tests that you haven't quite written yet, that the matrix will come in and, and sort of wreck your shop. Uh, but we, we use it a lot, and like I said, sometimes it's a love-hate relationship, but kudos to Pete BG and the team for making that what it is. Yeah. No, it's very cool, and I totally know what you mean. Um, it's, it's, always, it's always fun to have tools that help you catch things you should know but forget sometimes. Uh, and so I know like, there's often like you know code linters, all those kind of tools there. None of us would live without them, but once in a while you're just like, oh, just, just shush, quit, na <laughs> quit, quit nagging me. Um, yeah. Next, 
Next up, I wanted to kind of do a, cel a premature celebration. So there's been a proposal to add Alex Kavanaugh to the Charmers uh, group. Now, the Charmers, if you don't know, are a team uh, in Canonical and without, in the community and without, uh, of folks who help uh, decide whether Charmers should be promulgated, help, us, help with discussions on best practices, and are kind of like, you know, the heart of, uh, of really trying to demonstrate, and especially by example, like well-written charms. Um, and so to see uh, new people come up and get nominated, and he's gotten his two plus ones, but I don't think they've congratulated him yet or whatever on the list. So uh, it's good to see folks getting involved, um, shooting for that charmer status. It's a little more work. You have to demonstrate that um, you know you're following the best practices uh, consistently, and 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 really, uh, just congratulations to Alex for that. And lastly. This was a, for speaking of charmers and folks that write charms, there was a cool little uh, bit of functionality that was uh, added, I think it was the charm tools, in order to help people sort Juju versions. I don't know if everyone knows who kind of hit Zesty uh, has been released, uh, but now the fun part is, is we roll over and you can't just sort things alphabetically anymore in order to know which release is the latest Ubuntu. Uh, so if you're doing any kind of detection on that in your charms, make sure to take a peek at that standard functionality. The good news is that the work's been done for you and it's been tested out uh, and proven out. So, yay. Gotta love help, useful helpers. Yep. All righty, which brings us to our main something cool to show and tell. All right, so I don't know. This was on the list and it got me interested and I started poking at it. And so I wanted to kind of pull it together and show what I've got here. So let me share this browser window. Ooh, let me go to this one. All right, so um, Tom, with uh, Spicule is his team name here, Spicule Charms, uh, put together a, a GitLab charm. And I had seen a lot lately about GitLab. A lot of folks I know use GitLab. And, and basically, it's an open source tool you might use like GitHub. It hosts code. It lets you do um, pull requests and code reviews and have issue tracking. And it's really kind of, you know, I don't think anyone kids about it being a straight up, you know, internal competitor for GitHub. Now, you can obviously, you know, pay for GitHub Enterprise internally. And a lot of folks do that. And that's awesome. But sometimes you want to have full control uh, over what you, what you run, how you scale it. Um, changes to the code, what plugin and other material stuff you may want to do. And there's a couple of things that GitLab does really interestingly that I noticed um, in poking at it lately, the last couple of days. It actually has a whole kind of build framework in it. And what it looks like, you could very easily do things such as whenever something lands, you could actually perform a build and build like a, a, a Docker image or something uh, after testing passes and if it's all successful and and kind of ship an actual Docker image or something out of the build. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then the folks over at Tengu had put together this SSL termination proxy charm. And its job is to take anything that speaks HTTP uh, and provide a let's encrypt SSL enabled kind of proxy for it. And the reason I want to play with these together is that obviously you have GitLab, you've got all your source control and your your um, you know your, your whole points to keep this all private. Well, obviously you also want to make sure that you're serving this over SSL to make sure that any activity and stuff's encrypted on it. So I started playing with this and I started talking to Tom about it. And then Tom actually last night, <laughs> after I had my demo ready, he went last night and made it even more awesome by putting together this GitLab SSL bundle. So what this does is it literally gives you a one-click deploy, add it to your model, and deploy away a GitHub clone with SSL termination and, and Let's Encrypt. Uh, really, really easy to do. So here you can see the, uh, the GitLab charm itself walks you through how to go through and set it up. Basically, you deploy it, you pull up the uh, web UI, and you have to um, set a password for the admin. It's got multi-user support, uh, SS, uh, SSH support, uh, it's the whole nine yards, right? Uh, some basic config. Now, the charm's young. It's It doesn't support scaling out to multiple nodes yet. Um, and there's a few other bugs I'm going to file now that I've been playing with it. But what I wanted to show is basically 
this is me running this uh, in Jazz on GCE. Now, obviously, if you want to run this internally, the points to bring your source code inside, you're going to want to run this on MAS, maybe on LexD, um, even the manual provider or whatnot internally. You could use uh, the VMware provider that's in Juju to deploy it on top of VMware if you have that inside your company. And you can. Um, this could be built out you know, to be a much more awesome full out experience. Um, what I did is I loaded in here all my projects from uh, from that I have for my open source project that I used to put a lot of time into called Bookie. It's got a bunch of parts. You know, I have a Chrome extension, the Firefox extension, uh, the actual code itself. And so here you can see it pulls it all in. I'm logged in. I've got my branches, my tags. Um, I could go through and check it out and clone it. And I did. I would go switch over to the terminal and show you, but I don't think it's that impressive. And so it's really kind of cool. So I can go in and look at the current merge proposals that are out. Um, let's go look at this one. It's a little one line change. Dope. I totally forgot to put self on this class uh, method. How did I miss that one? And so here it's all running. Now, the things to note is that if you note, I've got this running at HTTPS code.bookie.io. So bookie.io is a domain that I own. And this is where the SSH termination proxy charm really, this is, I love how this is two different teams writing stuff that they need that then works together well because just the way Juju's designed. Um, this charm, you configure it with just the host name of what your um, let's, let's encrypt you know DNS name needs to be. So I went to my DNS provider um, and I went to my domain bookie.io and I added a new subdomain called code and I linked it to the IP address of my uh, my front end here. And when I did that, it then updated, set up the SSL cert and got everything ready. And so let's go and show the terminal here. Do -do -do -do. No screen share. You don't want to see my head. So here you go. So here is the running model. So the GitLab server running, the SSH termination proxy running, and you can see I love I love the messaging here. So charm authors, you know, messaging is awesome. GitLab is ready. Uh, and what's nice, I really like how um, they did this charm such that the DNS name that I put in the config comes back to me in the message, so I can see that my URL is set up here code.bookie.io is ready to go. And all I have to do is create a relation to it and something that speaks HTTP. And in Juju parlance, that's basically a, an endpoint. And so if you think about it, um, we have a lot of charms in the store that speak HTTP. Um, I've given previous demos on things like Grafana and Zeppelin uh, could. Zeppelin doesn't support HTTP yet. Now I really want to add it so that I could SSL uh, SSL that. The other thing this charm does is it provides simple HTTP authentication. So you can add a username and password to any web app that speaks HTTP, even if it doesn't support usernames and passwords. So if you want to throw up a temp file server or something like that, you could use this proxy charm to put it under SSL, stick a username and password on it, and give it to a client or someone to test with and play with. Um, Zeppelin was a really good, it's a case where I really want to go add that layer, that uh, HTTP layer to it now. But if you think about wikis, uh, ghost blog, um, WordPress blog, anything that speaks HTTP, you can now, boom, I mean, one click, put a quick DNS name up and have it much more pro kind of professional and, and shareable and stuff than, than uh, anything we've had to date. You know? And if anyone's set up H uh, HTTPS with the Apache charm, uh, it does it, it's good. Um, but it, it's a little more complicated. I'm, I'm becoming a big fan of this Let's Encrypt, make it easy for me uh, kind of thing. Hey, do you know, so Let's Encrypt uh, automatically expires certs after like 30 days or something, right? It's Something like that, yeah. Pretty short window. So what happens in 30 days or whatever that window is? Does the charm sort of automatically regenerate a, a another certificate or is it an action that you... I don't know. The charm's only been out for a week, so I've oh. only been playing with it yeah. in short bursts. I haven't hit that yet. Uh, that's a really smart question, though. Okay. Uh, and I, I wish that uh, we could get, maybe if Merlin, you know, we can get him to, sorry. What we should do is ask that on the mailing list and, and then encourage Merlin. This is where I yeah. think there's a couple of things I'd love to see polished out out of this. Um, one of the issues is that I set up the DNS name in the proxy charm, which is great. 
and it sets up the cert. And then I, it's related to GitLab. The problem is that um, GitLab didn't pick up that my DNS name for end users. So when I get clone, I want it to be git clone code.bookie.io. But because the proxy is in front of GitLab, it doesn't know about that DNS name. So it was saying, oh. it was saying you should get cloned from localhost, which isn't true. So you have to go into GitLab and you have to change a config setting for it, um, which one, I wish GitLab had that in the web UI to set an external URL. It's not, it's in a Ruby file that then generates. And so it's a couple lines. I'll have the step-by-step -step instructions. I'm gonna put a blog post out on how I set this up and walk everyone through. It's it's really like four or five steps. It's, it's not, you know, not that bad. Um, that I'll put out following this show uh, to kind of just give you the cut and paste instructions you can kind of see. I think it would be awesome if the proxy could present the DNS name somehow over the relation line back to the application to then pick up whether or not, you know, what to do with it, right? Because it's very common for web applications to be sheltered behind a proxy, especially things that might run on odd ports. You know, a lot of the Java stuff will run on ports 8080 or 8090 or something. And then you put it behind a proxy. Well, obviously, the end user is actually connecting at the proxy endpoint, not directly to the IP address of the application. So anytime it generates a link or, in this case, a git clone command or whatnot, it's using the wrong URL, and it has to be configured. Okay. So there's, there's definitely some room for this to get more polished and better. But this is already so much easier and so much nicer and and really just, like I say, two teams doing things that they need that then, because of Juju, just work together really well. I was just really excited. I had to come show this off. Yeah, that's really cool. And so and I want to encourage, yeah, folks that really want to use, you know, run their, not all code can be open source. I'm very fortunate. I work for a company that does a lot of open source. You know, we, Juju and all our stuff's available on GitHub and it's public. But you know, before Canonical, everywhere else I worked, we ran our own code serving internal, be it Git or Subversion or whatnot. And so having the power of being able to do really professional workflows of code reviews with issue tracking, with um, CI, CD pipelining and such that's available through GitLab in a really easy to maintain and operate kind of charm is really sweet stuff for those folks that run their code inside. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Um, anyway, so there's mailing list uh, replies, or you know, both the folks hit the mailing list with their separate charms, one for the GitLab charm and one for the proxy charm. And then, Mer um, not Merlin, Tom Barber hit up about, <laughs> I think he even said Rick's been bugging me, whatever, uh, last night. So he updated and created that bundle today. So definitely check it out. Um, reply back to those folks who are doing some fun and interesting things and uh, let them know what you're using it for and maybe join the community and help make it better. Maybe figure out how to get that domain passed back across the relation. That would, that would be really awesome. Um, and definitely, I need, I need my weekend to come so I can try to add HTTP to the Zeppelin charm because that would be just killer to have that database with you know a dashboard of different queries and stuff on it, password protected over SSL. Like, that's a killer, killer feature for that Zeppelin charm for sure. Yeah. All righty. Um, anything else you want to talk about or show about? Anything else running across your radar? You're just all excited uh, about the nope. big data release. You're Not like, yet. Big I know, data. right? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> all right, then. Well, then we will let you all go. It's another Juju show. Thank you all. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a good day.